I'd like a, a petite filet mignon, very lean. Not so lean that it lacks flavor, but not so fat that it leaves drippings on the plate. And I don't want it cooked, just lightly seared on either side, pink in the middle. Not a true pink, but not a mauve either. Something in between. <laughs> Bearing in mind the slightest error either way, and it's ruined. Okay. And that's Niles from Fraser. And have you ever waitresses, have you ever been a waiter or a waitress and you sit there and people are saying, well, I think I'll order this. No, maybe not. I think I'll change it to the steak. No, I don't want the steak tonight. Is How's your chicken? And they go on through, they go on and on and on. And by the time they order, if you're trying to hold it in your head, they've actually ordered most of the things on the menu and you're so confused. I always, not on the waiting end, um, I used to do some waitressing uh, back in college, but on the other end, I always appreciate it when my server writes things down. When they try to hold it in their head, I don't have the security that they really got what I ordered. I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner. I'm a clinical psychologist, and that means you can get on the line right now and call me with any question that's robbing you of your happiness. I have had it. You know, in the past six months, I have done everything a man can possibly do to meet a woman. Singles bars blind dates, lecture series at the museum. I've even spent hours in the grocery store trying to look helpless in the produce department. And I'm here to take your calls. My number is toll-free, 1-877-DR-K-E-N-N-E-R. That's toll-free, 1-877-DR-KENNER. And you can visit my website, drkenner.com. And right now, I want to welcome LaToya to the phone. LaToya, you're having some difficulty. You have a new baby? Yes, ma'am. How old is the baby? Just a month. One month old. And this is your first? No, ma'am. It, how many do you have? I have two. Well, my first one is with my grandmother. Oh, your grandmother is taking care of her? Of him, yes, ma'am. Oh, of him, okay. And uh, do you get to see him at all? Yes, ma'am. You do? Well, he's been really sick, so I saw a family member to help me out with the first one because he was a premature and he was really sick when he was born. So your grandmother stood, uh, stepped up to the plate and offered to do it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you're calling with what question? What would you like some help with, Latoya? Mostly I need help with the anger management, figuring out what should I do with my anger, depression, um, and frustration. Okay. And this is, you now have a baby at home with you, a one-month-old baby? Yes, ma'am. Are you worried about harming the baby? A little. Yeah. Tell me what goes through your mind. Well, most of the times I just get scared a lot because I, most of the times I really don't know what else to do. I, when the baby cries? What, is it a boy or a girl? It's a boy. Okay. And when... I, go ahead. Oh, no, Mike. You can go ahead. Oh, are you married? Not, not yet. We were, we talking about that now. Are you living together? Yes, ma'am. So is your partner supportive of you? Ma'am. Is your boyfriend supportive of you? Yes, ma'am. So he helps out with the baby? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let me go back to the anger. Anger means that you're feeling that something is not fair. What are you feeling is not fair? Can you hear me, Latoya? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Are you feeling you're tearing up? Latoya, can, if you can hear me, can you just let me know that you can hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I want to give you some uh, suggestions. The hospital that you had the baby at, do they have a program for depression in pregnancy at all? Not that I know of. Some hospitals actually have programs that have follow-up, meaning they'll follow up after you've had the baby, and they have counselors available to help you out. Would you consider talking to, do you, you go to a doctor, right, You're, um, for the baby and for yes, yourself? Ma'am. Could you give them a call either today or tomorrow, maybe two, I don't know which co- uh, where you're calling from, which coast you're on, uh, but when the, their office is open, could you give them a call and ask for a referral to a counselor that can help you out with the depression, with the stress, with the anger? 
Yes, ma'am. Because here's the the problem. If you suffer in silence, if you don't let anybody know, then what's that going to do to your stress? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. It's going to make it much worse if you suffer in silence. If you, But you're not suffering in silence because you got on the phone and called me, right? Yes, ma'am. So you have the ability to reach out. You want to reach out for your sake and for the baby's sake and for your maybe your potential marriage coming up, for your partner's sake. You want to get the help as soon as possible for yourself. Yes, ma'am. And you can do that by calling your doctor and asking for a referral. Are finances a problem? Is money a problem? Yes, ma'am. If money is a problem, then if there is a teaching hospital in your area that trains doctors, you may be able to get in in a program, a study that gives you free health care, free counseling. But you would need to call your doctor. You would need to call the hospital that you went to to see if they offer such a program. Yes, ma'am. Let me pause for a minute. What are you afraid you'll do to the baby? Is it just hitting the baby? I mean, that's not a just. It's big. But I don't hit my baby. Wonderful. Wonderful. So what is it, when you said you may take the anger out, Is what would, what would we observe? Is your baby safe? That's my question. LaToya? Hello. Hi. 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 Who's this? This is Carlton. Okay, Carlton, are you are you with Latoya? Yes, I am. Yeah, I know she might might be feeling a lot of emotion. She's called me up, asking me what she can do. She's feeling a lot of anger. She's feeling stressed. She's feeling depressed, and she's feeling frustrated. And she's and I I'm recommending to her that she get some counseling locally. Mm-hmm. And it sometimes. Um, I don't know if she's aware of what resources are available, but especially if she's a new mom, I know she's had another baby, but if she's a new mom, if she suffers in silence, you know, if, if the two of you are suffering, that's not going to help either of you. And she wants, it, it's best if she treats herself the way she would treat a best friend, which would be to get some therapy, you know, to get some counseling. Uh, yep. And so... I know she needs anger management classes. Yeah, well, if you call the hospital that that where she had the baby, mm-hmm. or if you t- speak to either the baby's doctor or her doctor, they may have some studies that are available that might not cost you anything where she could get counseling for free. Because I think her case manager was saying something about that. It was going to be a referral sent to the hospital, but I don't know if she uh, did the referral yet. Could you help her out and follow up on that? Because if she's feeling angry, she's feeling that something's not fair. When, when any mom has a new baby, or dad too, it's, it's 24-7, meaning it, there's so much um, stress involved. So you want to be good to yourself and good to her and get that help. Okay? Okay. Okay, thank her very much for the phone call, Carlton. You're so welcome. Oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye. This is Dr. Ellen Kenner on The Rational Basis of Happiness. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance, the serious romance guidebook by clinical psychologist Dr. Ellen Kenner. It's no accident that narcissists and altruists often have a magnetic attraction to one another. Can you see how perfect the fit is? The altruist feels the need to selflessly serve others, and this is just what a narcissist wants. Narcissists want to be worshipped and gratified in every way possible, and this is just what the altruists offer, thinking it demonstrates their moral virtue. But the fact that they represent a fit does not make such a relationship successful. The narcissist cannot be satisfied and may soon tire of just one worshiper. And the more selfless the worship the altruist offers, the greater the feeling of emptiness that results. Such people may stay together out of fear or inertia, but it won't be a relationship between self-respecting equals, and it certainly won't be romantic. You can download Chapter 1 for free by going to drkenner.com, and you can buy the book at amazon.com.